This hour, the city's Department of Technology is working to determine exactly what information may have been acquired during the breach, including what this all means for the personal information of city workers and residents across Columbus who use city services. Since last week, the city dealing with a technology meltdown. Emails and websites down. Crucial contact with city services limited. Departments forced to communicate with the public via social media. Those looking to get online records or file reports with Columbus police unable to do so. CPD urging residents to call the non-emergency line if needed. We're pushing Mayor Andrew Ginther for answers. He's calling for patience. It's an active investigation. Uh, we're working to restore uh, systems and services as, as quickly as we can, but we need to make sure we do it in a safe and secure way. According to the city, the problems all tie back to a city worker's email account. The employee apparently clicked a malicious link leading to the IT breach. Although communication has been limited with some city offices, Mayor Ginther maintains the 911 and 311 systems are operational. Payroll for city workers also not impacted. We're really focusing on uh, public safety, public health, uh, public utilities, making sure those systems are restored as quickly as possible. In these cases, you know, the goal is, you know, to isolate the system, stop whatever's happening, contain it, um, you know, take systems offline if you can, um, you know, and, and figure out the source of it and find out what happened. Cybersecurity expert Alex Hammerstone says the major concern in an incident like this is the personal information of those connected to city accounts. We also need to ensure that we're building systems that are resilient so that somebody clicking one link isn't going to take down the whole town. The city is working with law enforcement and cybersecurity experts working to address the problem and get things back online. On your side, Rodney Dunnigan, ABC 6 News. This case, quite frankly, shocking. LaQuandra Williams admitting to gunning down her own son. All of it after a simple argument. Are you prepared for sentencing here today? Yes. In front of a Fairfield County judge Monday, LaQuandra Williams facing the stiff consequences of a split decision. No sentence which the court could impose here today can undo the harm and the consequences which resulted from her actions. Williams pleading guilty to the February shooting death of her 21-year-old son, Jihad Hughes. Investigators say Williams actually tried to stab her son before picking up a gun and pulling the trigger. An argument between the pair apparently led to it all. Messages from an online obituary page describe Hughes as a nice, respectable, and quiet young man. A series of victim impact statements also read in court. What happened to my son on February 19th, 2024 at 1503, when he was pronounced dead, <laughs> when he was pronounced dead, the victim of a gunshot wound at the hands of his mother, was no accident. Jihad's murder is the culmination of years of systemic abuse that spiral out of control. Williams was sentenced to life in prison with the first possibility of parole after 18 years. This is a crime that rocked many in their Fairfield County community. Disturbed, a mother could be accused and now convicted of taking the life of her own son. On your side, Rodney Dunnigan, ABC 6 News. Dr. Angela Chapman, the leader of the CCS district, is coming into the new school year refreshed, bracing for the challenges of the year ahead. <laughs> CCS Superintendent Dr. Angela Chapman all smiles Wednesday morning. A welcoming face for students at Woodcrest Elementary. Kids at the year-round school getting back to class. Good morning. 
As the new school year gets underway, boosting student achievement a focal point. Last year's state report card slapping Columbus City Schools with a two-star rating, meaning the district did not meet state standards. CCS earned just one star in the early literacy category. Chapman touting the success of programs like Woodcrest as a model. Students here getting more crucial time in the classroom. Our students need more opportunities to access the standards, access rigorous and relevant curriculum. And so I am advocating for more opportunities, increasing access and expanding opportunities for students to stay engaged, to stay connected to learning. John Coniglio, president of the Columbus Education Association, Association says teachers are giving their all in the classroom. We all want our kids to be successful. Pointing out a number of factors play a role in student success, including the poverty level across the district. Stressing support from district administrators is key in the school year ahead. We can always do better and we always can strive to do better. How do we do that? And I think that sometimes administration and uh, teachers have different ideas. CCS grad and education advocate Dejan Cox says it's vital the district makes positive gains, especially in the area of literacy. If you're behind, you're not getting those things, let's say in kindergarten or first grade or second grade. How can we expect that child to be able to get it? Indicating the future of many city kids hang in the balance. We need all of our stakeholders and our teachers, administrators, and our school board members, our superintendent to be able to come together, you know, to be able to solve some of these issues. Chapman and her team with a lot of work ahead. The pressure is certainly on Dr. Chapman to keep the district out of the headlines for problems and take a number of positive steps forward to boost student success in the classroom. Students at traditional calendar schools are in session in just a matter of weeks. On your side, Rodney Dunnigan, ABC 6 News. As communities across central Ohio and the state continue to grow, safety and security is a major focus. Establishing viable, well-staffed fire departments, a big part of that effort. The Ohio Fire Academy's cadet training program touted as one of the most challenging in the country. We train together, struggle together. After months of work, 19 cadets who've undergone rigorous physical and mental training officially ready to go to departments across the region. I'm so much more prepared than when I first started. It pushed us to our limits and passed them and made sure we're definitely ready. Their efforts vital and needed. Staff a real issue for departments across the state. Small townships really feeling the impact. Back in May, On Your Side investigators speaking with those like Homer Fire Chief Matt McElroy about this issue. We're all in the same boat out here. I mean, we're all working with limited staffing and uh, we know it's going to be a stretch. According to the state's fire marshal's office, the majority of fire departments in Ohio are staffed by volunteers, most over the age of 50. Homer Assistant Fire Chief Jason Hufford says smaller departments like theirs feel the brunt of the shortfall. We'd get a run and the employer would let them leave and come to work. Those days are gone. We used to have a lot of farmers that'd be out in their fields. Those days are long gone now. I said, people don't have time to volunteer and, and it's just the time commitment's huge. And then uh, the training that's involved with it. There's a lot of training. You know, it used to be a, a 36 hour card would, would happen over a weekend and now, you know, it's 120 plus to, to get going. That is a big reason Friday's Academy graduation was so crucial. Although small, this group helping to fill the ranks of some of the departments in need of a staffing bump. It means we're adding young people into jobs that are out there. Uh, it means a, a new beginning for them. It means freshly trained people for fire departments that are, they're going to be serving in. So it, it has a lot of meaning. When it comes to staffing challenges impacting volunteer departments, the state fire marshal's office has developed a team to come up with recommendations to help ease that burden. As you can imagine, it's a work in progress. On your side, Rodney Dunnigan, ABC 6 News. 
providing help and hope. That's the big mission behind the I Know I Can program. Students in school districts across Central Ohio taking part, focused on creating a bright future for themselves and their family. Hold on to that for right now. A send-off like none other. I'm kind of scared. It's it's a whole new experience, something I've never really come close to experiencing before. Hundreds of college-bound kids coming together before heading to colleges and universities across the country. I think I'm also excited to make new friends and know new people and have new experiences. These kids, grads from I Know I Can districts, students from Columbus, Reynoldsburg, Whitehall, and Southwestern City Schools. The program looks to push kids towards college and career options, helping with counseling, financial aid, you name it. Especially now more than ever, knowing how to manage my income is very important. And especially when it comes to like your financial aid or like you know, how you can actually pay for college. That's a, a very useful skill and a very important thing to know. Wednesday, students provided with vital supplies as they get set to arrive on campus for the first time. It should, I feel like a really big hug and an opportunity to continue to shower our students with love, support, encouragement. Organizers of the I Know I Can program are truly trying to make a difference in the lives of local kids. In the process, they are no doubt proving to be positively Columbus. On your side, Rodney Dunnigan, ABC 6 News.